Welcome back to the dopest show you won't get sick of. I'm Spencer. This is Sasha. Spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I also got a lot of stories about the crazy stuff that happened while I was actually in prison. And, God forbid, you end up in prison. I want to make some of the same mistakes I made. So, this is somebody I personally knew. Personally was involved in this a little bit. It's a pretty insane story. Um, so basically, you know, I was as addicted to dealing as I was using, uh, you know, delusions of becoming top guy, you know, and maybe having a plane fly across, something like that, watch too many movies, you know, but I ended up going to this rehab. Whenever Connect fell out, he's up all money and everything else. And there was also this guy, uh, who there's a movie called Body Brokers and basically there are these it's a dirty industry of people trying to get people in and out of rehab, billing insurance, and making billions of dollars. And um, if you see that movie, it's in kind of one of those situations that uh, I was involved with this person who was kind of a broker. But anyway, I ended up in this rehab in Pennsylvania. And, of course, I don't want to get clean. It's not my intention. You got to want it. Didn't want it. Didn't want to get clean. Didn't want to quit dealing. Didn't want to do. Didn't. None of that. This rehab was the most god-awful place ever. It was a hotel that was converted into a rehab. The place that you had to sit in all day, this open room that had chairs all through it, had no, it, it was cold as could be. You had to stay bundled up like an Eskimo all day just to sit in this room. And it was flooded, flooded with all kinds of stuff, people using, and it was just the worst, the worst place. You know, seeing good rehabs, this was not one of them. It was an absolutely terrible place, terrible staff. Everything about it was terrible. And being in rehab, something you'll see is a lot of addicts just trade off war stories. I got this messed up. I got this messed up. Then you'll have other people that try to network to make connections for once they get out, make new connections to get stuff. That was me. I wasn't there sitting talking about I got this messed up. I was talking about prices, everything else, completely wrong, stupid mindset. My best decisions, lost my 20s to federal prison, so definitely not advocating it, but this is a pretty wild story of what ended up happening. One of the people I talked to was, he, his cousin was the guy in Baltimore, like the guy, the guy. And you know, he quit, he was on probation, he was looking at going back to prison if he didn't get cleaned up. And even though he did get clean and stay clean, uh, and I'm talked to him about meeting up and getting stuff off of him for him to make a good bit of money, me to make a good bit of money, and he kept clean, and I'd actually meet him at his NA meetings. And then there was another guy who I talked to who was from Philly, and he talked about robbing dealers, how he'd done it before. He's probably in his 40s. He'd been in prison before, and he had this whole thing, and I had me talked into it, you know, just from us having these conversations, I was thinking, well, shoot, man, it might not be a bad idea, you know, because I was going to live in a halfway house. It's in a place called York, Pennsylvania, and Philly's not too far away, especially me being out of town. Hit them, get back to York, everything would be good. Nobody, I'm, I'm not living there, so they couldn't find me. You know, I had that whole thing. So I went out to rehab, making plans with different addicts that were also in rehab that had the potential to be getting clean to do the right thing, and we were doing the exact wrong things, weren't ready yet. And during the time that I was in the rehab, which I'll tell the whole story of that later on, it was flooded. I used, and I actually got caught, they tested me. When they tested me, I failed the day before I was set to go home. It didn't really matter though, I got released the next day before they had a chance to do anything about it. I was driven in a van by staff from the rehab to um, uh, York, Pennsylvania. On the ride there, I was actually uh, not the only person who was being transported to York. There was another woman who was in her 40s. And you know, just addicts have conversation about that type of stuff. And it blew my mind to know that she was on a 320 milligram of methadone a day dose. That's the highest dose I've ever personally heard and that's what she got. She'd been on it for 10 years, and she was a street walker and everything else. Doubt she got back right. It didn't seem like it was her time either. So I had stuff in my system, and I showed up to this place. It's a system. Of, it's a guy who owns, like, or he rents, like, seven buildings, seven houses. 
and each addict pays like 80 to 100 a week. So if he's got seven people in a house, he's getting uh, 2,800 a month. Say he's renting it for 1,500, he's making 1,300 off the one house. He's making 10, 000, 15,000 a month off these people. Now something else in halfway houses you might not know. You know how you have to evict somebody, you can't just kick them out? Not so in halfway houses. There's federal law that protects the rest of the addicts. If they evict you from a halfway house, it's on the spot. You got to go right then. That's how it works. That's how it is. That's just something interesting. I figured I'd mention. So I get there, they test me, and I fail. And he's like, well, "That can't be right. You just got out of rehab." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." Literally, I, it was in my system. I did fail. I did the wrong thing, but you know, I got the benefit of the doubt, so I didn't get in trouble right there. So I end up going to go see the guy in Baltimore. When I go to see him, and I see how the stuff is set up. I see it's not like where I'm from. Where I'm from, it's mobile dealers and it's people that sell out of their houses or, you know, stuff like that. This is five man teams. Five man teams, two lookouts, one guy takes the money, one guy does the handoffs, and one guy sits on some heat unless something goes down. And this guy I was talking to who's from Philly was talking about hitting five man teams and stuff like that and I said, No, 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 no. I don't think so. I'm not going to be doing that. that. That sounds like a bad idea. No, that sounds like it'd be your last mistake, possibly. So, you know, I end up, he ended up calling me about that. And I'm like, no, nah, not right now, man. You're just pushing off. And, uh, you know, didn't keep in contact with him as much, you know, until he calls me and says he liked to do one, liked to use one thing, and he liked to, he didn't like to use another thing. He liked to, you know, he liked to smoke, but he didn't like the didn't like the opiate. So he calls me and he tells me that he's robbed some people, and asks if I'd like to pick this up from. Him. He'd sell it at me to a highly discounted rate. People that smoke, Ron, you know they um they want money quick because it's it's a terrible addiction. It burns a hole in your pocket quicker than about anything else. And this all, you know, like I said, lost for twins federal prison, and the guy I'm getting ready to talk about, you're going to see the consequences of what happened to him. So definitely not glorification at the time, as cool as it could ever seem at the time. Definitely not. The worst ideas, the worst thinking, our best thinking got us the worst consequences. So I end up meeting him. He's got, you know, he's got pieces that he's got from these guys, and he's got the stuff, and he's selling it highly discounted. And I'm like, dude. Tell me, tell me how this how this came about. And he, I'm like, you get, you find somebody to help you out. He says, Nah, man, I did it by myself. I'm like, How'd you do that? How, how'd you go about doing that? All by yourself? You took down one of the five man teams? He said, Listen. He said, You see this van? He's in a white van, an old crappy white van. And I'm like, Yeah. And he's like, My aunt is a retired police officer. She kind of a little bit heavy, so her uniform fit me. So I wore her uniform. And I got I got a light, and he had a mag light, and he'd drive up to the five man team corners, and he'd have he'd be holding the light. You know how a cop has like a spotlight coming off their car? Well, he'd hold up the light like it was a van, and he'd screech up, and he had one of those strobe lights that looked like a cop car light that he'd sit on the dash, and he'd drive up. Well, when he'd drive up, they'd scatter, they'd run, they'd throw their stuff down. It usually, sometimes they'd have it stashed under a car, sometimes under a door, uh, set of steps or something like that. And he said sometimes he'd go to them and he'd buy something. Because when he buy, bought something, one guy takes the money, one guy hands it to him, but he gets to see where they have it hidden at. So when they ran, he'd go get their stuff. And he, that's how he'd rob them. He's, in, he's impersonating a police officer. And he did this a number of times. And we kept meeting back up. He'd try to sell the heat to me. And you know, I'm like, no, no, no. Don't want no part of that. That's, that's a whole other issue. Not going down that route. And um, he kept telling me more and more stories every time. I mean, it was entertaining stories that he'd tell me. It was wild stuff. It was like stuff out of a movie. But I'm like, man, this does not sound like... I'm like, you, you need to be careful, man. I said, it's, this sounds like... You're going to have some people looking for you. And at the time, what ended up letting him get away with this was they were doing a whole lot of sweeps, trying to clean up certain parts of the city. So it seemed like, you know, they were just coming by to sweep that certain area. 
And that's so he kept doing the same thing. And he's wearing his aunt's police uniform. And he's in a van. You know how I've been hit by vice before. Vice, I thought I was getting kidnapped by a bunch of bikers. These people look like straight up dope fiends, you know, came up, un didn't announce themselves or anything. Just stormy in regular cars, didn't even announce themselves as police officers. I thought I was getting kidnapped by some bikers. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, pull up in vans, stuff like that, that's the type of thing that happens. So this happened, you know, a handful of times, and I just had the feeling that, you know, something bad was going to happen. And it did. Eventually, you know, there was a dealer that wasn't a team, it was just an independent dealer who he'd robbed. And word had gotten around that there's this, there's this, uh, there's this guy out there, this, this addict that's robbing dealers. Well, the dealer called the police to file a report on him for robbing him. Well, when the police showed up to take the dealer's report, the dealer would, had stuff on him. They caught the dealer for dealing, for filing the report. When they went to go get his report, they caught him selling stuff. That was another funny little thing about it. He ended up getting Bond. I ended up talking to him for a bit, and then I guess he went away. But basically, what ended up happening was they got they got onto this guy, and he was in the uniform and everything, and he ended up running in this building, hiding in this building, and he ended up stuck in this one place, and he smashed himself, like literally ran like a football player through a glass window trying to escape from the police. And they ended up they ended up getting him. That's ultimately what ended up happening. And he got out on bond and he called me and he told me about it. And I was really careful about what I said. Cause when you can't get a hold of somebody for a while in that type of thing there's usually a chance something's happened to them. Something bad has happened. And that's a lot of the time how people end up being careful, you know. And a lot of times when they call you, they're wanting you to say something because that's how they work deals out on people. And that's something that, you know, I was pretty obsessive compulsive about. And I was really careful. And if somebody even said certain words on the phone, I'd just hang up mid-sentence on them on the phone. But anyway, um... Yeah, he ended up getting on bond. He was looking at a good bit of time. There was a number of things he got in trouble for, from impersonating an officer to felon in possession of something you're not allowed to have as a felon. Um, to there were a number of things, a number of dealers that reported him, turned him in. Uh, I'm sure a dealer that ended up getting caught. You know, he told me about that. But that dealer who they ended up getting, you know everybody knew about this guy word was out everybody heard about this guy because he was hitting everybody and like I said he'd drive up at night he'd have that light jump out of the car announce himself as police and they'd run so it wasn't like you know Omar from the wire or something like that was coming up on somebody it's actually I mean it's a pretty intelligent scheme when you think about it but when you really weigh out the consequences of what your actions are going to cost you, I mean, I believe he probably got about 15 years for everything he did. Never found out the exact amount, but ended up hearing everything about it and actually had guys that were in the halfway house with me that were talking about it. And they were like, man... We should have done something like that. Only if we had a police uniform. Well, that place, they were even talking about getting a costume from a costume shop as cops and doing stuff like that. People out in the halfway, they had all kinds of schemes. They worked for this one food store, and they had, like, these bucks. Like, it was just, like, a gift certificate, but they worked in the store, and they got, like, thousands and thousands of dollars in these gift certificates. I'm not going to say the name of the store, but it was... That it was a little gift certificate, but it was as good as money. And they were selling those for like 33 cents, 50 cents on the dollar. To get in good, we had this one woman that came by to test us every week. Some reason, I guess because I was the youngest person in there, you're supposed to randomly get tested. Well, somehow I randomly got tested every week. I had to be really careful on that. But where you knew what time it was, you know, I dodged it. But of course, inevitably time ran out. They gave her some of the bucks that, to use at that place. 
it ended up getting caught. They didn't arrest them. They got to pay it back. But they were always scheming, scamming. They were stayed clean for the most part. A few of them went back to it. But just having that mindset, when you have that mindset of, you know, even if you're not in addiction, that mindset of dealing, that mindset of scheming, scamming, like they had a job at this chain food store and they were still trying to steal stuff, scheme, scam, sell it on the black market, you know, your bad stuff's going to happen. You can't have that mindset. It's it's not going to work out good. It never does. This guy probably lost 15 years of his life. He'll he's probably 45. It means he'll be like 60 when he gets out. Be a senior citizen. He's been in prison before. I mean, there's most of his life. You know, it's ain't a whole lot more coming back from that. I mean, you've run your time out. That's the one thing, you know, I talk about I lost my 20s to federal prison. Yeah, it's time I should have been going to college, having fun, running around with people. But the one thing that I can honestly say that I am grateful for, got it out of the way young, you know? And I'm not out of the way of it. I could I could go back to it tomorrow. And thinking it's out of the way of it, that's the most dangerous thing I can do. It's part of why I'm such a recluse and don't use social media and I'm closed off from everybody. I got eight contacts in my phone. I know how... It's just, you know, one away from me going out and starting to try to rob people and you know, get another 15 years. But I lost my 20s in there. Imagine, you know, having a whole life of it and then at 45 years old, getting 15 years in prison. That's some, that's some scary stuff because he, he's not going to be out till he's a senior citizen. What's he going to do then? Where's he going to find somebody how any woman he's not pretty much a chance to find an, a, a good woman that's pretty low okay you're you're a felon a multiple time felon in your 60s what are you going to do for work what are you going to do how are you going to get it together at that point and at that point you'd be surprised how many senior citizen addicts that i know that are, were just run down doing the same old thing that aren't never going to do it. You know, a guy in prison that been said he used since he was nine years old. He said he used dope since he was nine years old. He said he's going to get back and do the same thing. He said you know he and he had a whole plan about how he's going to do it right this time. You know, old man, still delusion that he had a way that he was going to make it work. You know, something has to click. Something has to change. But some people. You know, whatever it takes to make it click, it just doesn't happen for them. For me, it happened to me. It, it happened to me. But anyway, if you like the video, press the like button. If not, you've wasted 17 minutes and 50 seconds of your time. In the past month, my dad had to have surgery on his knee. Tore his ACL bowling. Surprisingly, there are more injuries in bowling than you'd guess. My mom has to have shots in her back. Her back went out, just fell, and it's almost it's unbearable pain for her right now. Casey's mom, um, three discs in her neck. Sounds like they've ruptured. My stepdad had surgery on his knee too, and now Casey. And I just went through the worst sick I've ever been in my life. Now Casey has a kidney infection or something. She just got on antibiotics yesterday. It's been a really trying month. It's when it rains it pours. A lot of stuff has happened all at once. So sorry I've been a little out of the comment section, but it's like, man, what's gonna happen next? Like all this stuff happened at one time. Me getting sick as I've ever been sick, you know, Lord. But it it'd be alright, you know, these things they, they come and they pass, you know, that's it's something, this too shall pass. I used to hate it when people say that, but you know, you realize it's not permanent. There was a time where I was facing 40 to life in federal prison for something I didn't, uh, for what was trying to get put pinned on me for something I didn't do. That was a problem. There was a time when my mom had cancer. Uh, breast cancer went through chemo that was a problem and I remind my mom whenever she gets overwhelmed mom do you have cancer today she said nope I say well I didn't do heroin today either so I don't guess we have problems too bad today do we and whenever she gets overwhelmed she talks about there's something to problem and it puts it in perspective you know she doesn't have cancer I'm not on heroin so we don't have problems like we used to have it's it's still serious it still sucks 
but when you've had something so incredibly overwhelmingly bad happen when the the new stuff that comes at you when you start to get stressed about it you have to remind yourself it's not as bad as it could be so you know I'm going to get through it but just that's been a little bit of my absence and delay of responses I'm usually good about the, those dirty uh those dirty only fans girls spamming messages in my comment section I usually get those as soon as they pop out um, but where I've been a little busier some of those linger I delete them right away block them they just come up with new ones I don't, I don't know if they, they, who clicks on that stuff I mean somebody's got to click on it they post so many of them um, but I delete them as soon as they come out but that's why those have been on there a few times because I've been tied up and a little bit busy so I apologize for that but anyways y'all have a good one